Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylee Isaacs. I'm the founder of the Awake Network, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to this special pre-summit live guided practice and Q&A with international meditation teacher Kyra Jewel Lingo. As of this morning, over 87,000 of us from over 140 countries around the world are gathering to explore the science and wisdom of emotions. If you're joining us now, please take a moment to say hello in the chat, whether you're joining in Zoom or on the webpage, um, joining live or watching this recording later. Let us know where you're tuning in from, uh, who you are. It's so great to get a feeling for the community. So it's a huge treat to have Kyra Jewell with us today. Uh, Kyra began practicing mindfulness in 1997 and lived as a fully ordained nun for 15 years in Thich Nhat Hanh's monastic community where she immersed herself in deep practice. She now teaches Buddhist meditation, secular mindfulness, and compassion internationally. Her upcoming book, We Were Made for This, uh, Time, We Were Made for These Times, 10 Lessons on Moving Through Change, Loss, and Disruption, will be published in October of this year, and how timely. Thank you so much for being with us, Kyra. Thank you so much, Kaylee. And a warm welcome to everyone joining in and um, I think this is such a beautiful way to begin this summit by taking time to pause and just check in and drop in. So, mm. yeah. Thank you, Kyra. Uh, we're really excited to be kicking off the uh, official summit this evening for the Science and Wisdom of Emotion Summit. And it feels like such a poignant time to be exploring uh, emotions as a global summit. Um, it's been really touching to read everyone's comments that have already been pouring in on the summit homepage and to just get a sense of what everyone's been going through over this past year. Uh, it's been really powerful to heal, hear all of your stories and the emotional intensity that so much of us have been feeling. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next four days, which will be full of dialogues, teachings, and practices from both scientific and contemplative perspectives. But before we jump into all of that richness, we thought it would be powerful to take a moment to pause and give ourselves the gift of making the space to be able to simply feel what we're feeling. We're all feeling so much. Can we take a moment as a global community to create the space to just feel that together? And before we start talking about emotions, we wanted to offer a guided practice to help people work with them practically and experientially. How can we directly work with the intensity that our whole planet is feeling right now? So thank you so much, Kyra, for helping to create this space for us. We could not be in better hands. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to give folks a heads up that we'll be taking live Q&A uh, towards the end of this call in about uh, 30 minutes. And so you'll actually have the opportunity. Um, some folks will be able to come on and ask your questions live with your video and audio. And we're really looking forward to that. So I'll be giving more instructions on that uh, when we get to that point. And uh, in the meantime, thank you again, Kyra, and I'll let you take it away. Thank you so much, Kaylee. So I'd like to share, oh, it's just so beautiful to, oh, so there's some chat messages coming in that the audio isn't so clear. I wonder if we, uh, is, Oh, let's see. It says there are two different voices. I don't know if that's sounding, is my, okay, people are saying it's clear. Okay, good. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I will begin with a little bit of a framing of the RAIN practice for caring for difficult emotions. And then I'll lead you in a short 10 minute practice. And then uh, as Kaylee said, we'll go to questions. So we, we've all been through quite a year uh, since the pandemic began in March last year. And so we just wanted to begin by honoring uh, what might be here in this uh, gathering of so many of us from so many different places around the world. Um, we've may have undergone some kind of loss. We may be in some space of grief. There may be anxiety or fear. Many of us have had to endure some kind of isolation, loneliness, frustration at not being able to gather with people we love. 
maybe some helplessness, despair, or numbness. This has, you know, just been going on too long and we don't want to hear about it anymore. Um, and, and that's on top of all the usual stresses and strains of living in a human body of, you know, the difficult relationships that we may have job insecurity, financial losses, sickness, the external political instability. And then we may also have, you know, touched great, you know, understanding in this time of difficulty. Maybe there's a deeper awareness of the goodness in our lives. Maybe there's gratitude and appreciation for gifts in our life that we took for granted before this time. So there may be a wide range of things that we're sitting with, both, um, you know, positive and negative, uh, difficult and pleasant. And it's not just COVID that we're struggling with we know as a as a human race we have climate chaos we have all sorts of violence that is uh, on the rise so there's many pandemics that we may be impacted by so there's a practice that can really support us in caring for the difficulty that whatever emotional um, pain that we may be going through, whether it's related to internal things or external uh, causes. So um, I'm still seeing many messages that the sound isn't very loud for some people. I don't know if I should do something to make it easier. Some people are hearing well and and many people are saying it's too low for them. So uh, Kyra, we'll look into that on the backside and see if we're able to adjust your audio levels. And in just a moment, if we need your help, we'll, we'll have you uh, uh, do that. But just so you can keep going, we'll try and figure that out by ourselves. Great. Okay. So... So there is a practice that can support us when things get difficult, when our emotions are challenging. And it's called RAIN. It's four steps. There is uh, the step of recognizing the difficult emotion, the first step. The second step is accepting that it's here. The third step is investigating, looking into it. And then fourth step is to nurture and to care for ourselves, to care for our difficult emotion. So I'd like to back up before I go into the four steps and just give you a model from Buddhist psychology of how our mind works um, to help explain why this practice can be so transformative. So in Buddhist psychology, the mind is understood to have several layers. In this case, I'm just gonna talk about the two, two layers. There's an upper layer, which is mind consciousness, and there's a lower layer, store consciousness. So store consciousness is, it's like the unconscious in Western psychology. It's called store consciousness because it stores the potentialities of all of our mental states, which are described as seeds sleeping in the depths of our minds. There are many kinds of seeds in our store consciousness. Some are wholesome, which means they lead to well-being, like mindfulness, generosity, forgiveness. And some are unwholesome, which means only that they lead to suffering. This would be like greed, like ignorance, hatred. And all of us have all of these many types of seeds. It's said that there's 51 or 52 kinds of seeds. We all have all the seeds. So another way of thinking of these two layers is like the living room, like the main story of a house uh, or building, and then the basement where things are stored down there. We don't usually go, go there. 
And so when a seed is watered in the store consciousness in the basement, it rises up into mind consciousness or into the living room, and it manifests as an activated mental state, which is no longer sleeping, but it's now capable of making an impact on our body, on our actions, and it can change our physiology. So suddenly we have a guest in the living room, and depending on which guest it is, it can make our experience pleasant and cozy or very unpleasant and tense. So for example, if the seed of anger gets watered by something we do ourselves or by something um, coming to us from outside, it wakes up from its sleeping state. It enters into the mind. It becomes a, an active mental experience. And then the energy of anger is now felt. It's experienced. We feel heat. We feel constriction. Maybe the blood begins to flow into our extremities. We prepare to fight or flee. And in this state, if we aren't aware, then what we think, say, and do can express our irritation, our anger, and we may uh, regret that quite a bit later. Every minute that we spend consuming or expressing anger makes the seed of anger in the basement grow slightly bigger. So the next time something happens to trigger our anger, it arises faster from the basement, it's more intense, and it stays longer in the living room. If we keep allowing the seed of anger to be watered, either by ourselves or our environment, then we get, can get stuck in this toxic loop that makes it grow bigger and bigger every day. And we become trapped in a pattern of constantly getting angered, even by small things that didn't used to bother us before. And this has a de detrimental effect on our body and mind. Our nervous systems weren't designed to handle that kind of stress of chronic anger or any chronic uh, painful emotion. The good news is we have in the storehouse of our mind in the basement, we have the seed of mindfulness. We have the seed of compassion. We have the seed of wisdom. And we can bring those up anytime. They're always available to us, just like the sun. It may be night where you are on your part of the planet, but the sun is still shining. It may be cloudy and gray. You may not see any ray of sun, but the sun is still there, always shining. So our mindfulness, our peace, our um, wisdom is always available to us. And we can call that seed up when a painful emotion arises. Anytime, no matter what the emotion is, we can call up mindfulness. So with one mindful breath, with one mindful step, with one moment of awareness, mindfulness is there in the living room and suddenly things become different. It has a soothing, refreshing effect on our body and mind. It brings attentiveness, friendliness, and curiosity to our experience. So usually we suppress our painful emotions like anger or shame. We avoid them, we pretend they aren't there, or on the other extreme, we vent them. We let them run the show and take over our living room. So neither of these two extremes helps us to transform the emotions at their root in store consciousness. RAIN, this mindfulness practice, is a middle way between these two extremes. It's a third option that actually leads us to transformation and peace. We can embrace any of our strong emotions like anger, jealousy, sadness, confusion, or fear, anxiety, by calling mindfulness awareness into the living room. As soon as we notice that an unwholesome, a painful seed has arisen. We can say to ourselves, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So we can say to ourselves, oh, anger, I see you're here. I recognize that you're here. We don't deny that anger is there. We don't try to distract ourselves away from it using technology or consuming something. We instead turn towards it. And then and we face it. And it can, it can help to notice how it feels in the body, to notice what its characteristics are. 
And when we do this, as soon as we begin to recognize, then our painful emotion starts to shift even in a small way because we're not pushing it away. So there's no longer a war within us where we're trying to fight something that's um, actually present in us or trying to pretend it's not there. So we're being honest with ourselves. We're, re re we're returning home to take care of this tense situation that's in the living room. So that's the first step, the R of RAIN, is to recognize that there is a painful emotion arising. We, we can try to call it by name if we know its name. If not, we can simply notice, okay, there's suffering here. There's a painful experience here. I don't know what it is, but I just feel bad. So we recognize something's not okay. That's the first step. And it takes some courage to do this because it can be much easier to turn away from it. So we want to be, you know, appreciative of even the small steps we make toward what's difficult in us. So the next step, the A of RAIN, is to accept. We have an inbuilt, uh, even on a, a, single, a single cell organism moves away from what's painful, from what um, doesn't feel good. So we have an inbuilt um, instinct to not move towards what's difficult. But in this step, we can learn that actually if we open to the pain that we're experiencing, that that is what actually can lead to a true transformation, to a real um, soothing and um, healing of that difficult experience. So with, with a allowing, we, we generate compassion for ourselves. We recognize that our anger is part of us, so we don't want to reject or judge it. And when we accept a, a difficult emotion, it doesn't mean that we let it take us over and cause destruction. Mindfulness is there taking care of that strong emotion so it can't do harm. And the accepting step can be like, like an older sibling taking care of a younger sibling that's crying or someone who's caring for a, a child, a baby that's in pain. So the part that the difficult emotion is like a crying baby. So we acknowledge that this part of us is suffering and we move closer, we open our arms, we take good care of it, we might hold it, rock it, soothe it. We can even speak to this part of ourselves saying, oh, my, my dear pain, I see that you're here. I want to take good care of you. I'll hold you with my mindfulness. I won't leave you alone. I won't deny you. You're a part of me, and I will embrace you with kindness, with concern. And as, as our you know, difficult experience is received in this way, it begins to settle down very naturally. And then we can move into the third step of RAIN, the I, which is for investigation. Because this difficult emotion will begin to reveal itself to us as it begins to feel safe and accepted. And then we can see below the surface. When we're caught up in an emotion, it colors our view. But as it begins to calm down, we begin to see, oh, we can understand more um, what's going on. So with investigation, we call on our natural curiosity, the desire to know the truth. And we direct a more focused attention to our present experience. So we might ask ourselves things like, what most wants attention? How am I experiencing this in my body? What am I believing? What's beneath this emotion? And what does this vulnerable place most want from me? What does it need? So we're really tuning in to this um, experience to really be on the same frequency with it. 
to attend to it. And so we, we're not doing this conceptually through our minds, but more feeling it, this felt sense in the body. So we may begin to understand in this step of investigation where, for instance, our anger comes from, how it may not even be our anger. It might be the anger of our, our ancestors or of our community or of our nation that we took on. And so when we understand it, we know what to do to begin to heal it, to help it release. And so it, as we do this practice of investigation, things can begin to unloosen like a knot that's tightly wound up. The strands begin to come loose and we see more clearly, we, we recognize some deeply held patterns and that helps us to not keep repeating them. And then the fourth final step is nurture. And that's we turn towards ourselves with self-compassion. When we notice this suffering, we want to relieve it. And so we try to sense what this frightened or hurting or angry place in us most needs. And then we offer in whatever way we can, some gesture of active care that might address this need. Does it need some reassurance? Does it need forgiveness? Does it need companionship or love? And so you, you can explore different ways that this uh, difficult emotion might need your care. So there's a, and, and when we do this, you know, you can use a gesture like a hand on your chest or a hand on your cheek to express the sense of nurturing and care for yourself. And you could also envision yourself filled with some kind of light that feels warm, that feels supportive. If it feels difficult to offer love or nurturing to yourself, you could bring to mind a being that you trust, that you have faith in, that feels like a loving being. It could be a spiritual figure, a family member, a friend, a pet. And you could imagine that that being's love and wisdom is flowing into you. So um, when we practice to take care of our difficult emotions in this way, going through these four steps, recognizing, accepting, investigating, nurturing, the seed of that mental state begins to get smaller in the root of our consciousness. And so the next time something happens that is upsetting, anger in this case is slower to arise, it's less intense, and it passes more quickly. And so in this way, every time we do this practice, whatever strong emotion we're practicing with, it begins to have an ever weaker hold on us and we become more and more free. We need that, especially in these uh, difficult times. So this is from Dan Emmons who says, what most needs attention is the part of us that we seek to avoid feeling. When we have tended to that, we are changed and the world changes with us. So this practice has an effect on our world as well because it changes us. Okay, so shall we try it together? I am going to ask you to bring to mind an experience in which you experienced a painful emotion. Um, it could be recently, but it could also be something that you know you struggle with kind of consistently. That's like a pattern for you. Maybe it's impatience or feeling left out or, um, you know, judging yourself. And generally, we want to start with um, a milder or more medium uh, difficulty. So if you think of this on a scale of 1 to 10, 
maybe choose something from one to six. Don't choose like the most difficult things because we don't want you to, to be overwhelmed. Um, so we wanna go step by step, especially if this is new to you. So just let to see if you can bring something to mind that feels alive for you. And if, you know, even a feeling of numbness can be a difficult emotion to work with. It doesn't have to be something, um, you know, very dramatic. It could be this, this sense of not feeling much. That could be also uh, something you take as the, the focus of this meditation. We'll take, take a moment to choose a posture that's supportive for you for the next 10 minutes where you can be present for yourself and your experience. Letting yourself get as comfortable as you can, but also maintaining a posture that helps you to be alert and relaxed. You could just get a sense of your body as you settle into this position. Noticing the places of contact that your body is making with whatever you're connected to. Letting your body release its weight into these places of support. If it helps to begin with a few deeper breaths and give yourself time, take two or three deeper breaths. So now letting this situation, this moment come to mind when you experience this difficult emotion. And we'll recognize what's here. Acknowledge the thoughts, the feelings, the behaviors that are affecting you. You can do this with a kind of quiet inner whisper, noting what you're most aware of. You could note to yourself things like, ah, impatience, I see you. Or, hello, judgment, I see that, that you're here. Bringing attention to the nature of this difficult experience. Also a simple, ouch, I feel this, this hurts, this feels bad. You don't have to have a, a name for it if it's not clear. Mm -hmm. 
And once you have this sense of what this emotion is, allow the experience to be there just as it is. So you let the thoughts, the emotions, the feelings or sensations that you recognized simply be here without trying to fix or avoid. You could mentally whisper to this experience in you, it's okay that you're here. I accept you. I won't push you away. I give you space to be here as you are. Sometimes I even find just slightly leaning back if I'm in a seated position can offer more room for this experience to be. Maybe letting it know you belong. It's okay. So this allowing gives more space, gives a pause, and it allows a more intimate experience of connection to arise with this part of us that's in pain. So now we can investigate. We call on our natural curiosity, this desire each of us has to know the truth and direct a more focused attention to this present experience. So we might ask, what most wants attention? How am I experiencing this in my body? What am I believing? What is this tender part of me most want or need? Just listening, feeling. How does this part of ourselves want to be held or known or responded to? We can always learn more about our emotional experiences. See what this part of you wants you to know about it. See what it is revealing to you. What's it saying that it needs or wants? See if you can open your heart to that. And then we 
return to nurture ourselves now with self-compassion, which arises naturally whenever we recognize that we're suffering. So we try to sense what this place inside of us that's hurting or scared or numb about we try to get a sense about what it most needs. And then we offer some kind of gesture of care that might answer this need. Does this part of you need reassurance? Does this part of you need forgiveness? Does it just need your presence to know that it's not alone? Does it need love, friendship, an open heart? So experiment and see which intentional gesture of kindness most helps to comfort, soften, or open your heart. It could be, I care about you, I'm here for you. I love you, I'm listening to you. Or it's not your fault. Or you're just right where you need to be. There's nothing wrong with you. Trust in your own goodness. So in addition to some words of nurture, you may find it helpful supportive to gently place a hand on your heart or cheek or envision being embraced by a supportive, warm, caring light. And if it feels hard to do this for yourself, then call on someone that you feel is a caring being and imagine their love spreading into you, embracing you. Now, as you Complete these four steps, checking in, noticing the quality of your own presence, this tender expression of awareness. Appreciating yourself for being present for yourself. And we'll close with the sound of the bell. Thank you, Kyra. That was a beautiful practice.
So now we'd love to take some live questions um, from the folks that are watching uh, with us on Zoom. That's where you'll be able to come on and actually ask your question. And so if you'd like to ask a question live with your video and audio enabled, um, please write your question in the Q&A function at the bottom of Zoom. That's different than the chat function. And so that we know that you're ready to come on live with your uh, video and audio enabled, write live in all caps at the beginning of your question. And then write your name, where you're from, and finally your question. And if we choose your question, in about five minutes, you'll hear me call your name, and then when and then you'll be brought on live right away. So please be ready if, if you go ahead and write that in. Uh, and when you do that, a window will pop up asking you to enable your camera and microphone. Once you click yes, then you'll be on right away. So over the next few minutes, please go ahead and write in your questions in the Q&A uh, function at the bottom of the page. And um, as folks are getting started with that, um, Kyra, I was hoping that you could speak a little bit more about this beautiful practice and how we might be able to integrate um, that into our daily life uh, as we might have difficult emotions arising. Sure. So the simple note, ouch, or this hurts, or something's wrong, like having a quick way to just track that a difficult emotion is there. Um, because what so often happens is that the first we override, we, we jump over the recognition and we go right into some kind of avoidance or reactivity expressing um, that painful emotion. So really, uh, even if we're driving or in a conversation or we're at work or we're doing something that requires, you know, we don't, we can't go away and meditate <laughs> for 10 or 20 minutes, um, just noting, oh, something happened here. Like, it's like if we stubbed our toe, you know, maybe we can't stop right there and take off our shoe and look at our toe and see, is everything okay? But we know our toe hurts. And as soon as we get a chance, we're going to take a look at it. So it may be that you're in a conversation and something hits you wrong. Note, ah, this is painful. And you're still in the conversation, so you may need to do the next thing. But then when you have a little bit of time, you might come back to it and see what was it about what he said, what they said that, um, that you know, set me off. And then you can take a little more time. But just noticing, it's just like a mental note. I just stubbed my toe or something just landed on my toe <laughs> so, that, um, so that it doesn't go under the radar and you don't start acting out of it unconsciously. Um, but even this, you know, what we just practiced, bringing our hand to our heart or to our um, face, you know, you, that might not be appropriate in every situation, but a tiny gesture of, ouch, that hurt, and mm, I'm here for myself. You may be able to incorporate like a really mini, uh, a mini rain where you um, notice the difficulty and you bring kindness, care, to, to that in some small way, um, you know, mainly I would say it's really important to pause when you notice that something has gone off. Take a few breaths if you can, maybe sit down, have a, little, a few sips of whatever beverage you have to, to shift out of whatever situation was triggering for you so that you do something that helps you to come into more of a pause, more of a, a calmer place so that you can look at what's bothering you. Um, and as I said, sometimes that kind of pause can happen in the midst of action. So you're walking or you're driving or you're, you know, on public transportation, the emotion is there. You're still in whatever activity you're doing and you're aware, okay, I need to take care of myself. Something happened and I I want to care about this and not just let it rule me or, or push it away. So it can even just be in the mind. I care about this. If I can't deal with it now, I will make time to, to come back to it later. Thank you for that. <laughs> sure. 
So I see we have a few questions starting to come in. And mm -hmm. uh, just to remind folks, if you'd like to ask a question, you can go ahead and write live in front of your name, where you're tuning in from, and the question in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the page. And to get started, um, it looks like our first question will be from Banu Karbanda. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. Um, and so we'll be calling you on now. So if you see uh, the question to enable your audio and video, click yes, and then you should be coming on in just a moment. And then it looks like we have a few other folks coming up after that. So Banu, if you see the option to enable your audio and video, go ahead and click yes, and then we'll be bringing you on to ask your question. Oh, looks like you're here. Uh, you're muted if you could click unmute. Hi, Katie, am I audible? Thanks so much for joining us. And could, could you say your name? I'm not sure if I got it right. It's okay, it's a, it's a sound that does not exist in English. So. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so thank you for the beautiful uh, uh, session. It was really helpful. And you were sort of speaking to what I wanted to ask, but maybe if you could uh, answer to it specifically. Uh, I struggle with um, anxiety. I have been for some time. And um, the, I was wondering what, so when I, it does get triggered by certain things, uh, it feels really overwhelming to, to me. And um, that's when instead of, uh, I mean, meditating is the last thing I want to do in that moment. And I would I uh, deal with it with um, avoidance, like you said, that I don't do Netflix or WhatsApp or something. And uh, over the time, it has become a pattern I really struggle to get out of. So uh, are there some things that I can keep in mind um, that would help with that? And when it comes to, um, uh, when you said the nurturing, uh, uh, what, what, what nurturing sentiment or what healing sentiment uh, do you think would help in, in this case? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Banu. Um, really important question because I think it's a very common experience to um, to have anxiety and um, I think this um, you know one maybe if I could ask you just a quick question when you have anxiety how do you know you're having anxiety like what what are the things that happen in your body when- I, I sense uh, uncomfortable uh, sensations in my chest. I feel like uh, my windpipe is getting choked. Yes. Yeah. So very good. So that's already mindfulness that you're aware um, how anxiety affects you, what it feels like. So I think you, you might try when you feel anxious to, um, to notice Oh, anxiety is here. And what I feel is so important in this um, understanding of how our minds work is to notice that um, anxiety, like any other part of us, it's organic. It can change, right? And also that it, it's like a crying child. If you can think of it as like a part of yourself that is like a four-year-old child that's afraid, that's upset, that's worried, it can help to not push it away, which is so much easier. So as you notice those feelings in the chest and in your throat, you can say, oh, here's anxiety and see if you can soften towards them just even in a little way, like, oh, there you are. Maybe you even make an image of your anxiety. Maybe it's like, you know, some cartoon character or something that has this anxious face. If whatever helps you to relate to it as this part of you that actually really needs care. Because if you saw your good friend feeling anxious, what would you do? You would probably want to comfort them, right? Mm -hmm. If you saw a child that was feeling worried and afraid and upset, you would come to the child and say, oh, here, here, I'm here. Let me, what can I do to help you? 
So if you, once you feel the, um, the sensations in your chest, in your throat, try to um, visualize this very tender part of you that needs your care rather than, oh no, here's this terrible experience. I don't want it. Like sometimes yeah. we can see it as like a monster, but if yeah. you can see it as actually, it's this very tender part of us. Mm. And I, I want to be here for it because I know that if I turn towards it, it will actually resolve much quicker than if I turn away from it. That there's this phrase, the only way out is in, or the only yeah. way out is through. So we say, okay, you know what? Even if I can't be with it for the whole steps, the four steps, at least I just want to recognize. And let me okay. just feel this, this uncomfortable sensation in my chest. Maybe you even bring your palm to your chest and say, I feel this. I'm here for you. I got you. You know, let mindfulness, let the wisdom in you, because the wisdom in you is still there when anxiety is there. The mindful energy, the caring energy in you, mm -hmm. it's there. It's just hiding. And so the more you do this, the easier it will be to bring up other parts of yourself when anxiety shows up so that you don't think you're only anxiety, you're other things as well. And those things can come and help you care for the anxiety. But, but mainly- Well, I've tried to- Go ahead. I've, I've tried to have, I've tried to have um, a plan uh, you know, like a war plan going into it. Mm -hmm. And then when it appears, uh, it's so overwhelming that yeah. everything the, sort of gets tossed out of the window. Yeah. So it's, here's something you might, unbearable. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said it just gets unbearable and yeah. I yeah. forget everything. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a course on Insight Timer. Um, the app is free, but the course you have to pay for, but it is for anxiety specifically, it's 10 days, 10 to 15 minutes each. And there's a little teaching and then a guided meditation. Andrea something, can't remember her last name. Um, but you might go to something that, go, find it ahead of time. And of course, there's many free resources on YouTube, like meditations for anxiety. And find something that you like when you're not in an anxious space. Okay. that you know you feel you resonate with and when it's overwhelming if you have the, the space and time put it on because that can also support the wisdom in you to not be overwhelmed and if it helps to really um turn your perspective from seeing this as wrong that it shouldn't be here to seeing it as this is here to teach me something. This is a, no this emotions are a normal, natural part of being human. Some people have more difficulty with other emotions. Some people have more difficulty with the ones I struggle with, but I'm having a human experience. There's nothing wrong with me. And in our day and age, there are many things to be anxious about <laughs> that maybe our ancestors didn't have to worry about. So give yourself the, you know, the spaciousness to not judge yourself for being anxious. And, and this image, I'm sure you're aware of, it's from, you know, um, India, from the east, of the lotus that only grows in mud. The lotus yeah. doesn't grow on marble or in thin air. The mud is our suffering. The mud is our anxiety. The mud can produce something beautiful like a lotus. That's the only way a lotus can come about. So the anxiety is some kind of mud that can produce the lotus of freedom, of peace. So don't discriminate against the mud. Don't say, I wish, you know, this horrible thing wasn't here. Yes, we want to transform it. We want the lotus to be there, but it will only be there with the mud. So shifting how we view the anxiety as a problem and into something that we can actually learn to uh, work with. That is really helpful. I wish you well, Banu. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I see uh, another question has come up. Uh, this is from Yvette uh, Matheson. So uh, Yvette, if you're hearing me call your name, you're going to see the option to enable your video and audio. Looks like you're here. Um, I can see that you're on the call, but we can't hear or see you yet. Did we lose her? Let's see. Um, we might need to bring Yvette back on. I think I saw her for a moment, but now she's seemed to have disappeared. There we go. Okay. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Please go ahead and ask your question. So thank you. Um, my question was up and now I can't see it, but I want to know how to practice kindness when you start to get flooded with emotion, right? It's easy to be kind when I'm calm. And I sort of go from, you know, when I was thinking about what are those emotions, it was guilt, shame, and fear. That was quite a trifecta to help me just feel so overwhelmed. And then I got angry at myself for having those feelings. And then I just wanted to cry. And this was at work Friday. So I did, I cried, I like let it out, but then I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have cried. Maybe this is helpful. Maybe it, so I wanted to know what are others when you're to that level that it's so much emotion, what do you recommend to people do? Thank you. And, um, you know, the experience you described is really um, what happens because all the seeds in the store consciousness, they're talking to each other. So when shame arises, it can vibrate and set off guilt and then and then it sets off, you know, judgment, and then that sets off anger. So, you know, and the same is true with our wholesome emotions. So when um, we can even just notice, oh, look, this emotion came up, and then it triggered this one, and then this one, and then this one, that's something else that's coming up in your mind. That's not any of those emotions. That's awareness. That's the ability to track so that we need to strengthen <laughs> that ability to say, oh my, this is a, a snowball that's getting bigger and bigger. Um, you know, as far as whether or not crying should happen, it's uh, nothing that comes up in us shouldn't be here. I mean, it's all about what do we wanna cultivate? If tears help to release, and help us to come back into our center, our stability, it's fine to let them, it's a kind of rain, <laughs> its own rain that kind of can clear, clear the storm. But sometimes tears can be, um, you know, another way of being carried away into something. And so then it's just about discerning, well, how do I feel afterward? If I feel worse, mm -hmm. okay maybe another approach, but if I actually feel my heart is lighter, it's fine to, to allow that to be there. Um, but it's, um, you know, when you can track how one emotion came up after another, you can see how, um, how useful it can be to recognize the first emotion mm -hmm. so that it doesn't turn into a snowball with all the other emotions right? That's a similar to anxiety. Often it's just one little thought of, um, you know, oh, I forgot I didn't do whatever I had to do for this meeting tomorrow. And that can lead to a whole maelstrom of self-judgment and self-recrimination because we didn't notice that first initial worry. Oh, worry's here. So if that first um, shame came up, then recognizing shame is here. How do I feel this in my body? What does it feel like? Can mm -hmm. I turn towards it? Can I be with it? And even if the other emotions start to load on, because sometimes that's just a very deep pattern and it's okay, it's okay. Then guilt is here. Okay, guilt is here. Oh, this is really hard to hold. You know, this is really, maybe go outside. If you can do something to shift your, um, you know, don't keep doing the same thing. In other words, if the emotions are starting to pile on, maybe you get up and stretch a little bit or, um, you know, even just closing your eyes, taking five breaths, 
something's starting to come on. Can I just be present with it right at the beginning? Maybe the snowball won't grow so big. So you let yourself come into your body because it's when you um, are stuck in your thoughts that it really snowballs and you're not tracking that that's happening. But if you can come into your breath or into the sense of your body connecting to what it's sitting on or standing on or any other sense, maybe it's sounds or maybe it's noticing five colors in the room, it breaks that pattern of those, those really painful thoughts. So you, you settle yourself into the present moment, notice what's happening here and now and then once you feel a little more settled, you can do a mini rain where you notice what's the, what's the emotion that's most on top. If there's several, what's most on top? How do I feel it in my body? Can I allow it to be here? Can I say welcome to it? Can I breathe with it? Can I look to understand it a little bit? What's this about? How does this want me to be with it? Can I offer myself some kindness, some nurturing? Thank you. Mm, thank you, Yvette, for the question. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you. So it looks like we, we have about two more questions. So uh, this next question is from Sumati, uh, live from India. So Sumati, if you see the option to turn on your video and audio, please click yes, and you'll be coming on right away and you'll be able to ask your question directly. Looks like you're coming on. Hello, welcome. Hello, um, yeah, hi, am I clearly audible? Yes. yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much. Uh, so my uh, question is, thank you so much firstly for this session. And uh, my question is, I think I can't see it here. So I'm from India and uh, I'm myself a mindfulness trainer. And right now, uh, the situation that is here in India is so overwhelming that uh, my question concerns two places. One is from an individual perspective and one is from a perspective where I'm a part of a larger community. And so whatever, whatever is going on here, like they're seeing deaths, like I am personally seeing deaths almost every other day in my close vicinity circle. And uh, we are trying to provide help to each other, but then it's almost been two, three weeks since I have not really slept. I am not able to sleep properly. Like it's, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of survival guilt that we want to help, but then we're very limited and restricted. So for example, yesterday morning when I, after we struggled for almost a day to survive, to help one, family person to stay alive but then we couldn't she passed away in the morning and then I had to and then by 10 o'clock a.m. I started receiving messages for another help to help another patient and then I, I and when I'm not helping then it's a guilt but I'm not finding myself in a space where I can provide that help so I'm realizing that it's kind of taking toll over me in physical physiological context as well like a lot of headache is there and it's so I'm just finding it too burden and usually I go to art therapy I journal my thoughts I try to do that but then that is even has it's, it's become a challenge right now so, yeah yeah thank you Sumati for sharing this with us and I just really am holding so much how difficult this moment is for you for so, so many in India right now. Um, and I just really want to invite you to feel all of us on this call are here for you. We care about you. We care about all that you're holding, all the people you're trying to help, how exhausted you are, and the beauty of you trying to show up and be in this pretty much impossible situation where there's like no way to win, right? That it must feel so impossible. 
So just take a moment to breathe with me and feel that all the many thousands of people on this call who are listening to you, I'm inviting all of us to open our hearts to hold you in compassion and to pray from our hearts for your well-being, for the well-being of the people that you're caring for and for everyone impacted by this recent surge of the virus in India. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and what I'd like to say to you is um, what you're doing is really important. It's really noble and you matter. And so when you're not helping others, which you need to do, you need to have some time of your day where you take care of yourself so that you can be there to help others. So see that time as resting and preparing so that you can be fresh and available when others need you. You don't have to feel guilty. If you exhaust yourself, you'll get sick and you won't be able to help. So every moment you can spend caring for yourself will ultimately be for the benefit of those that you're caring for. And, and then when you are engaged with people caring for them, trying to keep them alive. You can also be caring for yourself and for the situation, tracking what's happening in your body, what's happening in the people around you, and bringing as much peace, as much um, acceptance as you can. Now the virus has gotten to such a state, it, it's not possible to go backwards, right? We, we're, stu we're stuck in this situation, so we have to accept that it's like this. Many people are going to die. Countries around the world are trying to send support to save as many people as possible. But until all of that is in place, there may be a lot of loss still. So we have to accept that. And it's very difficult, but you're not carrying it alone. So if you can feel your connection to the earth, know that the earth is supporting you. Every step you take, the earth is there. So when it's overwhelming, what you're taking in, the loss, the grief, the frustration, that you couldn't save that person who you tried all night to save, ask the earth to help you hold these difficult experiences. Let the, the, the guilt, let the overwhelm, the anxiety, let it flow down your body, out of your feet and into the earth and say, dear mother earth, can you please help me to hold this? This is too much for me. What I even do is I go into the child's pose in yoga. I, I kneel down on the earth. I put my forehead on the earth. I lay my hands on the earth. And I ask the earth to help me hold what's too, too much for me to hold. Sorry to cut you in between, but then there's a question from a place of a bit of hopelessness as well. That what you're saying, does that really work? Like mm. when you, your faith and hope, they are just kind of going apart. Do you think that really helps? I, yeah. I, I might be sounding like, I don't know. But. Yes, doubt is a normal reaction. Hopelessness is a normal thing to experience in this time. And you can practice with that. You can do rain even with hopelessness. You can notice, ah, oh, I'm... I'm so, often when we haven't slept, when we're 
feeling, you know, overwhelmed by our emotions, it's difficult to have faith that something will help us. So just notice, ah, this is doubt that's here. It's not necessarily the truth about your experience. It's doubt that comes up when we're kind of in a low, low energy, low, low space. So what I'm sharing with you comes from many, many people's experience of how to stay afloat when things are difficult. My spiritual teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, was working to end the war in Vietnam in the 60s. And he saw great death and killing and destruction around him. And he kept his energy and his presence uh, steady in that really difficult time by these basic practices of mindfulness, feeling his body, releasing what it was too much for him to hold. And he would cry. I would encourage you to take time to cry, to let yourself cry as you need to. But I, what I'm telling you isn't um, pie in the sky. It's not um, an idea. It's based on people's lived experiences of how to get through difficult times. And so it's okay if it doesn't resonate with you in this moment or if you feel that maybe it doesn't work. Try it. Try it if you can. Let yourself just give it a try. You don't have to do it if you feel it doesn't work. Then you just let it go. But I would invite you to, to try being there with yourself, giving yourself permission to take care of yourself, asking the earth to help hold you. And remember the thousands of us, 2,400 people on this call, we are with you. We're going to be thinking about you and we care about you. So draw on us on our um, care and our presence if you, if you need the support. Thank you so much. That, that need was comforting. And I will try to practice what you've said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sumati, for everything yes. you're doing. So, Kyra, I see we're coming to the end of our time here. And I'm wondering if there's any uh, closing words you'd like to leave us with. Um, thank you, Ky Kaylee, and uh, just really thank you, everyone, for doing this practice, it really can transform uh, our lives. And um, a teacher, uh, John McCransky has said, the root of all fear is the fear of our strong emotions, is the fear of our emotions. So if we can learn to be friendly with, to turn towards our emotions, then no situation is unmanageable because then all we're doing is doing what needs to be done. If it means caring for someone who's dying, we care for someone who's dying. If it means locking someone up in jail because they're a danger, we lock someone up in jail. But there's no added layer of suffering mm. because we're in a fight with ourselves. So if we if we lose the fear of any emotion, then whatever difficulty we encounter in our lives is so much easier because we know how to deal with those emotions and then we do what needs to be done. If it's facing our own death, we face our own death and we, we accept life as it is and we bring the best of ourselves uh, to whatever it is that we're encountering. So um, I, I hope that this practice helps us all to um, release some fear of our emotions and to know that our emotions are workable, whatever they are, whatever the situation, with mindfulness, with compassion, we can be there for any emotion. 
Thank you so much, Kyra Jewell, for leading this beautiful session. And thank you to everyone who came on and asked your heartfelt questions. It's such a gift to all of us. And um, bef before we close, uh, I think it would be nice to put in the chat um, Kyra's book that I mentioned that's coming up. And I know that that is based off of an insight um, timer program that I think is already available. Um, Kyra, is that, uh, is that the case that folks could already access that if they wanna learn more about you or is there any other way that's good for folks to stay in touch with you? Yes, so you can contact me through my, or you can always visit my website to know what my upcoming events are. And, and the, the Insight Timer course is available right now, um, skillfully moving through challenging times, uh, which has a one day's meditation is similar to RAIN also. Thank you, Kyra Jewel. And we'll make sure to put that in the links on the bio for the recording as well. And I see that it's being pasted into the comments right now. And so again, thank you all for joining us for this live practice. Uh, we look forward to the next four days of continuing to explore the science and wisdom of emotions with you. Uh, the official kickoff will be streaming live in just a few hours at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll hear a live welcome and introduction from Summit host, Eve Ekman and listen to a pre-recorded opening remarks from His Holiness the Dalai Lama as well. Uh, so we really look forward to seeing you soon. And I also just wanted to let folks know that we'll be putting closed captionings on all of the um, sessions that are recorded live. We're not able to do them live, but we'll be adding those as well as subtitles um, after within 24 hours after posting these. So again, thank you so much, Kyra. Thanks to everyone and we'll see you this evening. Take care.